Good morning, everyone. My name is Travis. I am the community manager with Unique BC and uh, UNQ Universe. Pleasure to have everyone. Uh, it's uh, these these spaces have been going really, really well. We've been having some really great uh, deep dives into some pretty uh, prevalent topics here, and uh, looking forward to getting getting our next one started. So, uh, as per usual. I'm just going to give people a few more minutes uh, to pile in here, put out the tweets, put out the Discord messages here, and uh, we will get started in um, in a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, uh, my friends from uh, Mushroom Party, absolute pleasure to have you guys here. Very much looking forward to, uh, to speak with you today. Um, from what I understand, you are the marketing and communications director with the with the club. Is uh, is that right? Hey Travis, thanks for having us on here. We're really excited for this uh, show to start. Um, that's right. I'm uh, I'm leading marketing and communications for Mushroom Party. I'm um, sitting right next to me is uh, Corey, our co-founder, and um, if you, if you want to bring up Gabriel, he's our second co-founder. Perfect. Uh, hey, first of all, yeah, pleasure to meet you. Let's get uh, let's get Gabriel up, Gabriel up here for sure. Hi there, friends. Marco here from Unique VC. Glad to have you here. I just sent a request to Gabriel. Tell me if everything is all right. Awesome. Sounds great. It's a pleasure to be here. We're super excited. Thanks so much for having Thanks. us. We're really excited to talk about the games and get to know you guys. Excellent, man. Yeah, that's what it's all about here. We're really excited to have you. And uh, Marco, pleasure to, pleasure to chat with you today as well, my friend. It's uh, an honor as always here. Thank you, Trav. Pleasure is all mine. And uh, yeah, Gabriel, welcome, welcome, friend. Thanks for having us. We're super, super pumped. <laughs> Let's go. Perfect, guys. So Let's bear get with this me. party started. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Excellent. So uh, if you guys just bear with me for a few more minutes, feel free to uh, to chat about. I'm just gonna send out a couple more messages here, messages here, just to maximize our exposure today and in uh, two or three minutes let's uh, let's get things going yeah maybe we can start with the easy one uh, what do you guys think about uh, zero royalties <laughs> a new thing that is going on lately it's all around the news and uh, it's changing the marketplace definitely so what are your thoughts on that yeah, let's start with the easy one, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah why it. not? It's, it, it's the easiest question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here's the good news. You know, from our perspective, we're launching our NFTs in a few weeks. We are, we are planning right now to launch our NFTs with royalties. We're watching the market really closely to determine kind of the future of royalties, of the future of where people are buying and selling NFTs. I would say the good thing from our perspective is we created our business model in a way that doesn't rely on the royalties. So the royalties are, are a nice way for us as, as creators to really reward our artists, our amazing artists who built these beautiful 3D NFTs. But all of our games actually have a fee structure separately built into them. So I would say, in short, we're not worried about the economic impact of fees going to zero as, as a business. We're a, little, we're a little disappointed because we think our artists should be able to still earn, you know, some secondary for his beautiful artwork as, as that artwork is being bought and sold. But at the end of the day, we're going to watch the market. We're going to see how things develop. We're going to follow, you know, some of the other big project leaders like D-Gods and see what they do. We're going to see how marketplaces like Magic Eden respond. And, you know, we're really flexible to the market conditions. At the end of the day, NFTs are still so early. Um, we just really don't know what these digital assets are going to look like, how they're going to be bought and sold. And uh, I, I, I would say, and you know, Corey, I think you agree with me. I'm just happy to be here and living through this history um, and being a spectator and a participant uh, because yeah. I think we're still early and, and that's just the reality of the NFT situation. Yeah, and I, Gabriel, I think you hit that, the, the nail on the head when you said it, it's such, the royalties are very important kind of, I would say, Web3 tool to make sure that the economics are flowing to the people that are either building the ecosystem or the artists that are creating the artwork. And, you know, it's funny, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people talk about the artist in terms of, of the, these royalties, but, you know, I think if NFTs are considered art, then that's, you know, how folks should think about it. But, 
you know, I think for us, we really think about it from, you know, a building standpoint and, you know, our royalties, you know, we, we will likely have a royalty um, almost for sure. Um, and it'll be split between the, our, our amazing builders, Gabriel and uh, Dylan, who you guys can see on the call here, some of our other engineers um, and our, our amazing 3D artist who um, has really done a fantastic job on the artwork. And so I think it's really key you know, to have royalties to make sure that all of the, the kind of contributors to what we're building um, are seeing the kind of economic reward on the back end of it. Um, and, you know, I, I actually have a, I'll, I'll pose a question, Travis, I, I think this is an, an interesting um, thing to ask, I guess, how much of the um, movement of NFTs, so kind of off, um, off platform or off marketplace, call it, um, transactions of NFTs, do you think are kind of causing the kind of no royalties discussion? And I, I, I say that meaning, you know, DGAs are super expensive. If you want to sell it on Magic Eden, you can go ahead and do that. You pay, you know, the royalty there, or you can go on to, you know, the famous Fox Federation have created really in incredible tools to uh, swap, whether it's uh, just soul or um, soul based uh, digital assets. And so I guess, Mike, I'm curious if it's something where they truly don't think that the royalties are something that's important to their business or that they want to really take care of the buyers of their NFTs. Or if it's something where, because there's tools to kind of go and, and exchange NFTs on off, you know, off marketplace or um, not over the counter, um, you're able to avoid those royalties anyways. So I'm curious how much of that's playing into it as well. Yeah, very, very insightful question to be asking. Um, first of all, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge uh, how much I appreciate we are jumping straight into the deep end with this conversation. <laughs> I admire your guys' perspectives, and I appreciate uh, you sharing those with us. I think you bring up some very valid points, you know. I think that um, the value of art, the artists and the work that's put in and the team and all of that cannot be understated. I think um, as coming at this from an, an art perspective, that's something that cannot be ignored. And um, I think that's one of the huge potential benefits or and, and that a benefit that's already we've already been seeing from NFTs is the capability to really even the playing fields when it comes to artists, you know, um, getting you know what they deserve for the work that they put in. Um, and this goes for physical art forms. This goes for music. This goes for all of these things, and there's so many really amazing projects out there right now uh, creating technology to be able to facilitate this. And, um, yeah, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Oh, I'm very curious to, to follow this as well and to kind of hopefully the, the true motives of this of this decision will be made more clear. And um, I think I think we're also going to see a lot of creative creative solutions come out of this as well. And that's one thing I'm very excited to, to see. Um, yeah. Um, anyone else have any, uh, comments, Marco, you're the one who brought up the question. I'm very curious to see. Uh, oh to no. Hear. Oh no. So <laughs> it's my turn to answer this easy question. Uh, so <laughs> I was browsing through my feed, of course, to Twitter and, uh, I saw some update about Solana thinking about adding, uh, royalties to the smart contract because they think that the royalties are a crucial plan. A uh, crucial part of the of the NFTs, and that's one of their, you know, paying the royalties to the founders and to the creators and appreciating the art. So, definitely, I think it should stay. It is definitely okay to have the royalties, but you know, it's it's the way it is. But we need to adapt uh, and uh, th think it through. But it would be nice, definitely, to see Solana adding those kind of changes to the smart contracts and everything else. I mean, this space is pretty new, although it feels like ages that we are all in here. And of course, we all enjoying trading, buying, uh, hodling NFTs, but uh, we should also appreciate the ones who created them and just to pay respect that way. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we could probably descend into a whole Twitter spaces just about this. I mean, I think that's what people forget. Um, obviously, yes, there are some really great engineers working on potentially building uh, royalty enforcement into SPL tokens on Solana. And then also recently on Ethereum, there were some great Stanford researchers that released a paper about reversible ER, reversible smart contract transactions. And they got a lot of blowback because a lot of people, I think, feel very strongly that immutability 
and that no fees, that these are actually the values that drive blockchain. And from my perspective, I disagree a little bit. I think what drives blockchain is choice. I think if if we can have reversible trans trans uh, reversible transactions on Solana, just like potentially having royalty enforcement on Solana and give the choice to the project how they launch, it's not it doesn't have to be one or the other. It, it means that a project can choose to launch an SPL token with royalty enforcement or not. It means a project or a transaction could be potentially reversible or not. That's the choice and the power of blockchain, I think. And we forget that. We forget about choice and freedom as one of the values of blockchain because I think we get sometimes too caught up in the financials and the immutability and some of some of the sillier values uh, that you know drive our movement into into Web three, um, and there are great use cases for royalty enforcement. There are great use cases for it not having royalties to be enforced, right? And so it, it should be up to the project founders and it should be up to the buyers and sellers whether they want to engage and work with you know NFT projects uh, that choose to enforce the royalty or not, uh, just like you know reversible transactions. Yeah, no, Gabe, I, I totally agree with that. And I, and I think another component of this is kind of asset ownership. And if you're owning the asset, you know, where are the economics flowing to? I think one of the, the biggest difference between, you know, or the, the, the way that I kind of view Web 2 versus Web 3 is, you know, where does the margin, the profit margin from the product go? Web 2, it goes to usually the company, so the meta or, you know, any of the companies they own. But in Web3, it's, you know, it should go to the individual contributors, whether it's the artist, whether it's the NFT holder that's contributing to uh, a gaming ecosystem. You know, the, the value should go to them, whether it's the floor price go, going up in that, act, in that um, digital asset because you have access to certain things in that gaming ecosystem. So you have either floor price appreciation or um, in the case of our NFTs, you know, if you play our games, we share um, a little bit of soul with you as a reward. Um, and so... Um, we think that kind of asset ownership and where the kind of value from contributions within a gaming ecosystem are at the, at the core to kind of what, you know, Mushroom Party and, um, you know, the folks that are in our community, uh, that's, that's kind of really what's, what's core to the foundation of, of our community. Perfect. I love it. I love it. I feel like uh, we're jumping right in there. Uh, no time's being wasted. And this is this is fantastic here. So I'm just going to kind of dial us back here just a little bit just to kind of make sure that there's some context provided for everyone here uh, who's taking the time to, to listen to us today. And, and and I'd like to thank you guys all for doing that. Uh, very much value your time. And, and I hope we can provide some value back to you for, for being here. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with a, a bit of an intro here. So today we'll be hosting Mushroom Party. Um, and then I've heard we've um, excuse me, just one quick second here. Uh, yes, so we'll be hosting Mushroom Party, and the topic of today's discussion is uh, developing and building P2E games on Solana blockchain. Uh, so first things first, just a quick tidbit that I will provide about uh, Mushroom Party, and, and please, I'm very much looking forward to hearing everything that you guys have to say. Uh, but there are a, a game development studio on Solana who builds really fun arcade-style games for everyone in Web3, whether you're a native to, this, to the ecosystem, whether you're a newcomer, whether you have large or small wallets, whether you're young and you're old. Um, I definitely took some time to, to browse your different games. And kind of my first impressions was I was extremely impressed with, with its simplicity and how precise your, your, your pages were and the games were. And literally anything that you needed to know is clearly outlined right there in front of you. So I definitely give you guys points for accessibility and very much appreciate that. Um, so before we get into kind of like the meat and potatoes of today's topic, I was hoping you guys can give me a bit of a bit of an origin story, kind of for yourselves first, and then and then kind of about your about your project as well. So kind of what what brought you to the Web three world? Tell us a little bit about your history, just so we can get a bit of context. Absolutely, Gabe. You want to go through history? I'm going to give it a run. <laughs> you can go ahead. All right. We can, if I miss anything, make sure to uh, we'll, we'll add that in. But um, we started actually in, in Web two. We were we're building an app um, called the Streaming Guide last last year, and we um, have a, a handful of really awesome kind of advisors and in, informal advisors that um, kind of help us think about kind of our business model, etc. And 
Um, last November, um, one of these advisors had challenged us to think about our business model in the context of Web3. Um, you know, after that meeting, Gabriel and I and the team put our heads together and we said, you know, do, do we want to dip our toe into Web3? Should we go and, and attack um, a problem in, in the Web3 space? And so um, we looked at the different blockchains to build on. We looked at different consumer verticals um, to build within. And we ultimately decided to make the move into Web3 and to build um, really um, simple to understand, but kind of hyper casual games in the Web3 space that allowed for um, this thesis of kind of asset ownership and, you know, those who are contributing to a gaming ecosystem to be the beneficiaries of um, that gaming ecosystem performing well. And so... Um, we set out on our journey um, at the beginning of this year. Wow, it feels, uh, it feels so long ago at this point now. Um, but we set out at the beginning of this year, um, and we really just started to do research in January and started to build our initial games in, in February. And we got our first game, uh, which is Show of Hands, if you guys are all on our site. Um, I think we've got some really cool soccer polls up there now. But we got Show of Hands up onto um, Mainnet in March. Of, of this year and really haven't looked back. We've, we've published uh, three new games um, in addition to um, show of hands since then. Um, and so the, the teams have been super, super busy, but um, really I would say the origin story is um, looking at some of the examples of companies that were um, really using the, um, I would say the, the blockchain or the, our, our public ledger systems uh, in blockchain um, as a really strong tool for uh, the companies that, that were being started in the space. And so um, that's something that we thought um, is going to continue as a trend well into the future and really what drove kind of our decision to, to build in Web3. I'm sure I missed something, so I'll let Gabriel uh, follow up here. I mean, I mean, you know, not not to get ahead of ourselves, but I think one of the things that we love about gaming, why go from media to gaming? Um, you know, obviously, great advisors told us to jump into Web three, but you don't just you don't just go from media to gaming accidentally. And so, I think from that perspective, uh, what we were really focused on was where is a place in Web three where we can build authentic communities. And we can actually really make a difference to Web3 adoption, right? Because I think the number is, you know, there's about 2.5 million uh, weekly active users on Web3. There are so many projects out there. Not all those projects can have those 2.5 million people as captive audiences. And so there's only a few options, right? We either have to build a more captive and sophisticated app to attract those 2.5 million, or we as an organization, we as an ecosystem have to grow the 2.5 million folks that are in crypto. And so that's really our model at Mushroom Party. We love gaming because we think gaming is, a, is an opportunity to build authentic communities and an opportunity, more importantly, to grow the tech and to bring new folks into Web3. And that was really what attracted us origin story-wise to this space, um, which it's just been fun, so fun to build on Solana since. I love it. I love it. I love, first of all, that it was it was the concept of Web3 that, um, that drew you to this space. And it's kind of the principle of guiding others to Web3 that's uh, inspiring your work. And I think that says a lot about the space and a lot about the potential as well. Um, so, yeah, no, I appreciate uh, I appreciate you sharing a little bit about your, your story here. Um, so right off the bat, I'm just really curious. What's the inspiration behind the mushroom theme? in the mushroom party. Can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> uh, you know what's great about Web3 companies is you can have a company called Mushroom Party and have absolutely no inspiration for how you got there. And so I I'm going to tell you like <laughs> a story about it, but this is probably the only point, the, the true story is this is probably the only point in my career where I can name a company Mushroom Party and it'd be a very fun, successful consumer app. So the story behind it is, we liked the idea of mushrooms because we, because we wanted these games to blow up, 
So more like mushroom cloud. Now, of course, mushroom cloud imagery is not nearly as fun or sexy as a cute little purple mushroom. So that was kind of, that's like the very short origin story. But with that said, people fell in love with our branding. So we probably would have changed it had it had it gone, you know, fallen flat with this sad, you know, story about a mushroom cloud. But when people saw our branding and, and they saw we added party to the end, they just got excited and it's fun and it's so Web3. And so I would say the origin story of the name is part, that was, you know, the, the boring reason we named it Mushroom Party. But then we certainly would have changed if it wasn't for the fact that we're in an industry full of folks that understand that gaming companies can have the flexibility to be fun and have a cool, awesome name like Mushroom Party. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the story. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Way to grasp the fun element and uh, and make the most out of it. I'm so happy to hear that, uh, Jim Brake. I think as well. That's a, that's a, that's a testament to uh, the community that communities that are built and just the different perspective that they have. You know, from the typical corporate America Web two uh, environment that I think everyone's so so used to kind of being being surrounded by. So <laughs> I love that. That's a, that's a blast. Um, Amazing. So uh, we, we, we've kind of dipped our toe into the concept of gaming. Let's, uh, let's go for a deep dive in there, shall we? So, yes, I completely agree. I love gaming. You love gaming. I'm sure most people here uh, have some sort of positive affinity with gaming. Why do you think that like, gaming on Web3 in particular, but particularly play-to-earn games on Web3, have been booming recently and what are some what are some of the variables that have been involved with that well i i think the crypto winter is a great place to begin right um play to earn is a great place to be when you still want to be in web3 but it's no longer fun to be on mango markets or it's no longer fun to be screwing around with dexes and and now you realize all these staking aprs are not really as as high as everyone or apys are not as high as everyone said they were so i think Play to Earn has been a really great opportunity for the ecosystem to keep these 2.5 million users engaged, um, which is, I think, one of the reasons why it's had a moment as as of recently. And it, it falls into the values of the blockchain, the idea that you can take some transient action and turn it into economic value. I mean, it's no different than people building an NFT collection, being able to take a physical piece of art that they made and driving value from it. You know, you look at stepping, being able to drive value from your steps, being able to drive value from these things. And the reality of the situation is, as much as I love my Fortnite skins and as much as I enjoy buying my battle pass every season, um, the only value I'm getting out of, you know, my skin mashups and those kinds of things after I pay is just the leisure. And so I think that's what's beautiful for us about play to earn is the users are still getting the leisure we hope and we and, we, and our goal as a company is build fun games, but as an aside, to be able to then drive economic value towards that leisure and that fun, that is only made possible by the blockchain. And so I think that's that's why Play to Earn is having having this moment. It's really the next nexus of the way users play games. Sorry, I may have just muted everyone by accident. That is my bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think no I may have been muted. All. I think I may have been muted myself as well. So I was just sitting there talking to myself. <laughs> so let's let's start this over again, shall we? Um, yeah, like I was saying, uh, automatically, uh, so many different rabbit holes are opening up here of uh, of different tent or different sidebars off this that I'd love to go down. Um, but I think this might be a really good time to actually dig into a little bit about the specific games that you guys are developing. Could you give us a little bit of an insight on the types of games that you guys have built already and uh, some inspiration there? And then maybe a little bit about some of the stuff that you guys are currently working on now and, and hope to be launching in the future.
Yeah, Corey, why don't you give a, an overview of our current games? And then, uh, Travis, I have really good news for you. I'm not sure if we warned you before, but we're actually making an announcement, a very exciting announcement about our future on this call. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our current games. And Corey, maybe I can share the exciting news. Ooh, hot off the press, Alpha. You guys are all in for luck. I'm feeling giddy. Let's, uh, let's get this going. I was not aware of this, but I appreciate you guys taking this opportunity. Let's do it. Amazing. Okay, cool. So to give you guys a rundown of our current games, we currently have four games on mainnet. Our most recent game that we launched is Rochambeau, which is a classic take on rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So if you're into gambits on rock, paper, scissors, shoot, move combinations, or you just want a chance to double your money um, for you know roughly 33% chance, that's a great game to play. Dgen word game. If you're if you're thinking about if you loved Wordle, you should definitely check this game out. I think it's it's a fun game. It tests your vocabulary, um, and will definitely allow you to uh, to expand the amount of, of words in your kind of five letter vocabulary. But again, a game where you can go in, work on your vocab skills, win a little bit of Solana. Um, Tombola, which is the second game that we released is really um, a raffle protocol. And so we um, list NFTs, um, and we've recently built a bridge, so you may see some Ethereum-based NFTs on there, um, and other things. And so Tombola is where you can go and for a very um, inexpensive amount of money have a chance of winning a blue chip NFT or other prizes and so we'll, we'll definitely expand what we're raffling off over time but uh tumble is a, a place where you can go and you know f- without breaking the bank have access to, to potentially winning uh, a really cool nft and then show of hands is um our first game that we launched and it really allows for um networks of folks to rally together on one side of a hotly debated topic and so if you were to go on show of hands currently We've got a bunch of really awesome uh, soccer or, or depending on where you're from, football posts um, around the World Cup in the Premier League. So go on and, and check those out. And for show of hands, if, you, if you're on the side that wins, um, you win your pro rata share of whatever the losing side contributed in Solana. And so, again, have a chance to win a little bit of soul. The, the common thread, Travis, through all of our games are they're hyper-casual, really easy to understand um, and allow our our users to win soul when uh, soul based nfts or other digital prizes and so um, that's definitely the common thread that we'll look to to continue to to build on but we certainly um, every time we do build a new game we're working with our users because we ultimately want to build games that they love so you know tombola was one where we had a, a bunch of sellers of nfts that were like hey can you build us a cool raffle protocol? And so we worked with those sellers uh, to build that. And, um, you know, similarly with DJ and word game, I know Gabriel has a, a lot of folks that are, are vocab wizards and, and Gabe is multilingual. And so um, this was a game that I know he really enjoyed developing and designing. And so um, the games that we have up on the site now, they're all super fun they're low stakes you can play for you know anywhere from probably 10 15 cents in us dollars all the way up to you know 20 30 40 50 bucks if you wanted to and so really the games are for everyone and and give everyone the chance to win soul win soul based nfts and and other cool prizes i'll let gabriel go into some of the things that are are in the hopper that we've got you know to look forward to here yeah so Corey's completely right. And I think the other thing that I love about our games is all of them are really uh, different and unique right now. And we're doing that by design. Uh, We talked about our values as a company in terms of of building a bigger tent. We think it's really important that our games are all games are hyper casual. All games have that kind of arcade or nostalgia style feel. But we're building and releasing games that do have different levers and buttons, if you will. And that's by design because we want to bring in new users. Some users are going to like the, the itching their brain a little bit when they play and they're going to like Gen Word Game. And some users do not want to open, it, open a book, right? Um, and so we want to build games for them too. Um, and so you'll notice as we're, uh, even as we have our launch, our launch library planned of future games, you're going to see games of all kinds of different styles. 
multiplayer games, live games, community engagement style games, uh, co human versus computer games. And that's really by design to build out a library that is attractive to a wide base of users. And speaking of that, I'm really excited to announce on this call for the first time that we're launching our next game. And the game, <laughs> by the way, we love naming games at Mushroom Party. And so I'm really excited to announce that our next game will be called Gold Digger. And Gold Digger is going to be your chance in this crypto winter to dig for gold instead of mining for gold, CC Bitcoin, um, and win some Solana on the way. Um, and so very soon on all of our social channels, you're going to see all of the new great imagery and beautiful previews for Gold Digger. Gold Digger will be a very exciting game. Great work to the engineering team on the game. And as a reminder, today our OGs and who will, who will who are really our future NFT holders um, because this is a benefit that all NFT holders will get once we launch are getting early access to the game on DevNet. Um, so our current OGs who are really strong supporters of, of the project and then just, you know, a few people who are thinking about buying the NFT know that once the NFT is launched, you would also be getting early access today to this game on DevNet. So any OGs listening, we're going to drop that link into Discord later today, but we are really excited to share Gold Digger with you guys. And big, big hats mean, off to the dev team. I think like, you know, they, they continue to, uh, to create these super creative games. And frankly, I think you guys got this one, you know, onto DevNet in, you know, I think under a month. And so the, the, the pace at which you guys are building these amazing games has been um, super fast. And so, you know, big ups to the, to the, you know, our dev team, you guys have done an, an absolutely incredible job. And, you know, um, Travis, it's, it really is cool. You know, I think one of the awesome things about Web3 is, you know, we have our OGs who are, are in our Discord. They're, you know, folks that have either played our games from the beginning. And there, there's, you guys can still become OG. There's a channel in our Discord. We can check that out. Um, but we, how cool is it that we can go in and have a game that's on DevNet that, you know, you can, DevNet, obviously, it's Monopoly money. Um, everyone can go and play and test and we can get live feedback from folks um, immediately before, you know, we go and, and release this on mainnet, you know, with folks that already love our games. And so it's just another thing that's, you know, really powerful about this space in terms of the feedback loop and, you know, how tight kind of our community is uh, for us to go and, and improve the games uh, before we you know, really release them uh, to a broader audience. I couldn't agree more with you there. DevNet is a, a magical component of the Web3 space. It's um, <clears throat> when we launched our platform on uh, on DevNet, it was such a great opportunity just to kind of connect with our friends and really kind of let them show them firsthand what it was that we're working on and our community as well, you know, really get everyone a good taste. And uh, of course, the people who've been supporting you for all this time, you know, they, their feedback is incredibly valuable. So I'm really happy that you guys had that opportunity right now to launch that. And what a huge congratulations I'm sending your way. Um, a month in development and already on DevNet is incredible. Like that's, uh, I think your uh, production curve is is steepening very quickly. And I'm very excited to see what you guys have in store. Perfect. So yes, that's... Uh, I'm going to see if I can get a, um, a link to your um, Discord here, and then hopefully people can, uh, can go check that out for themselves. Uh, but if you go to the Mushroom Party uh, Twitter, um, yeah, the Twitter account, uh, I believe there's a link tree um, link right there that you can go to, and it has all of their links to different games and their Discord as well. So definitely please feel free to, uh, to check that out. Um, yeah, once again, guys, huge congrats on, on that new game. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm extremely intrigued. I can't wait to go check that out myself. Marco, I'm sure, I'm sure you agree here. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm gold digger. You, you had me there with the, the comparison to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <clears throat> oh, the words, the words left my brain here now, but regardless, point being very excited for you guys and, uh, really excited to see how this one pans out. Um, awesome. Thanks, that's... Travis. We're equally excited. And there's, trust me, there's more coming in the pipe. So Gold Digger was one that came quick to our, our develop, our product development team. And we have so many more exciting games coming and we love building games and we're having fun with it. Uh, so stay tuned. 
I love it. I can hear it. I can feel it. And uh, definitely bullish on Mushroom Party here for, for what's coming out in the future. Um, on, on kind of um, your project and your launch and your future plans, can you tell us a little bit more about the function of your NFT? Kind of a little bit about the art and a little bit about the utility that uh, holders can expect? Yeah, let's, let's start with utility because in my mind, that's the most important. And then I think Corey will give you an awesome overview of the art. You know, utility was part of our design from day one in the NFTs. And, and, if, and if we're being honest, as a company, we've kind of always done everything backwards. Uh, we are going to have, you know, five, we're going to have six games likely on the site before launch uh, without NFTs, uh, which is quite a big reversal. And when we built out the structure of the NFTs, we knew what the utility of them were going to be before we even concerned ourselves with the artwork. Um, and, and hopefully that, that's building a really good foundation for the future NFT holders. But I like to describe the NFTs kind of as loyalty cards. And you'll hear me use this metaphor a lot of, of, the, of the physical arcade. And we want to be the digital arcade, right? And so in the same way where you walk into a digital arcade and they have uh, the, the most favored player card or the VIP card, that's the NFT. So if you want to be a Mushroom Party VIP you want to buy this NFT. And what, what does that get you? What does that get you? Well, one, it gets you early access to our games. So imagine going in through you know, a, a red velvet uh, secret area to play games that have not been released to the public. So that's the first benefit. The second is you actually get a say in what games launch next, which is going to be a really exciting. I can't wait for it because honestly, I need the help. But um, you're going to get a say in what games uh, hit that arcade floor next. Um, and then third, you actually get fees back for playing. So all of our games are fee-based. And so any NFT holder or loyalty card holder, VIP member, who participates in a game in a week, any game, meaning they just enter through the arcade, they actually get to claim back fees that we take on all of the games in the arcade. So that is like a discount, essentially. For you being a loyal player and walking into our, our digital arcade, you're actually going to get Solana back as an NFT holder. That's super exciting. There's so much potential there. And by the way, that doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg with what we have planned for NFT holders. We have something way more exciting planned, but I can't, I'm, we're not ready to discuss it on the call yet, which it's like, it's annoying me because I can't talk to anyone about it, Travis. But all I can say is NFT holders or future NFT holders who are listening to this call, do not think that is where the utility will end. If you can imagine all the possibilities of what a VIP loyalty program gets you in the physical world, we're thinking about those things for Mushroom Party, and it is certainly a part of our future. And now I'm going to let Corey tell you about the beautiful art that we have that represent the NFTs. Yeah, no, I, I think, Travis, it also goes right back to the, you know, the, the original conversation we had around royalties. And, and again, we don't need royalties. You know, our, our firm uh, and our games are can stand on their own two feet, but... You know, it's, it's our amazing development team. It's these builders that are developing, you know, what the loyalty pass of our NFT gets you in this amazing gaming ecosystem. And so um, really hats off to our dev, dev team. Gabriel and Dylan have done an amazing job. And when you think about utility, I mean, w what better utility than, you know, 1% of all the soul that passes through our platform, all of our games are soul-based. Um, we hold that for our NFT holders. And at the end of the week, if you're one of those players, that played in one of our games, we send you some Solana. Seems like just like a really easy way to have, um, to reward, frankly, the active participants on our platform. Um, and so we're, we're laser focused on making sure that there's really strong both economic governance and utility and um, access utility um, via our NFTs. In terms of the artists, I mean, we, we got incredibly lucky. Um, our, our artist's name is Michael Hume. He was at Walt Disney for 20 years um, as a design director. He's been working at gaming studios for the past 10 years, works in Web3 right now. This will be his inaugural NFT project. This will be the first NFT project that he releases. I'm sure I'll have you know, more NFT projects down the road, but we're incredibly lucky that we get him uh, mic'd for our first. Um, and so... Really, really high quality artist. The NFTs are 3D modern war skeleton soldiers. And so if you can see the um, PFP that we have up on our Twitter, 
that's one of our holographic um, air soldiers. He's got a, a jet pack on that you can see there. And so really, really high quality artist, really, really high quality art. Um, and I would say just, a, you know, well thought out in terms of the traits that we have um, and how the NFTs will allow for users that play our games to benefit both economically and from a governance perspective on our platform. Amazing. You, you've won me over with the art. Yeah, I can't get enough of it. I think it's super catchy. It makes for an excellent profile pic as well, which I've been realizing spending time in this space, how much of an asset that, that truly is for, uh, for a project, being able to have something that really pops, that grabs the attention. So it definitely seems like you guys have accomplished that. So congratulations. Um, let's, uh, let's broaden our topic of conversation a little bit here and focus kind of on the grand macro uh, picture that is play to earn games. Um, let's see here. I have a bunch of questions. I feel like we've already answered a whole bunch of them. So thank you guys for, for being so full on with your answers here. Um, let's, let's, let's chat about this here. So there, there have been some recent large scale security issues that have been present on the Solana blockchain, like, for example, those major uh, wallet drains and, and all of that. So can you guys speak to a little bit about the security precautions that you guys are taking just for anyone who might be nervous moving forward, uh, looking up their wallet to, uh, to different addresses and all of this? Def definitely, Travis. I'll, I'll let Gabriel hit the security question, but I, I think there's almost like an even kind of more important kind of topic on this front that I'll, I'll kind of slide in here. And it's, it's around just some of the projects that, you know, aren't realistic with the either roadmap that they put forth or the um, strategic initiatives that they tell their community and user base that they're going to execute on. And, and you know, I think that something that, you know, it, I think has already changed over the past, you know, six to eight months since, since the kind of crypto enter came on um, is that consumers in the space are are starting to be a little bit more skeptical. They're they're saying, All right, you know, who's running this project, and you know, what is the utility of this project? They're asking the questions that really should have been asked at the end of last year. Um, and so, you know, my my sense is that, and if I had a you know a message to any of the other kind of consumer companies in the space, it's take care of your users. You know, don't don't promise them things that are impossible or that you have no intention of of building. Um, you know, or at least, you know, planning on giving your best shot and building um, because it, it kind of pisses in the pool for everyone else. You know, I think we're, we're going to go through a period over the next couple of years where we've got to regain the, the trust of, of the average consumer that was thinking about Web3. And, you know, my view is it's, it's not going to snap back overnight. It's going to be something that, you know, we kind of blow up like, like blowing up an air balloon by mouth, you know, over the course of the next handful of years. And so, you know, the, the number one thing that I think we can do, I would say, as a, as a, as a you know, the crypto or blockchain ecosystem is you know, take, care of, take care of your users. Um, you know, I think that we, we are always thinking about how do we build for our users? How can we make sure that our users are enjoying our games, they're treated fairly, um, and they have an amazing user experience? And you know, I think when you have, whether it was you know, Celsius or, or Terra Luna, companies that um, had products that were, you know, structurally unsound or, you know, were being pitched, you know, pitching something to consumers that, you know, wasn't possible. You know, I think that kind of sets back, you know, the, the industry as a whole. And so I think the, the number one thing, you know, that we can do, and, and I think we'll, we'll jump into security in a second here, is, is take care of the users. Um, you know, the, the folks in your community, some of these communities seem like they're enormous, but, you know, you, you, Getting to know individual people in a community is, is so incredibly important. I know folks are anonymous here, but it doesn't change the fact that, like, you know, having values in a community and, and getting to know folks and treating them, you know, the right way. Yeah, and, and I think that, um, Corey, obviously security is part of that, taking care of the users. But I also, you know, to, to give you the other side of that coin as, you know, one of the engineers on the team... I think that there also has to be a little bit more grace given to the ecosystem. And I think that the way that we develop bounty programs and, and things of that nature have to be sped up and be a little more sophisticated because the reality of the situation is in a new, very nascent ecosystem like this, hacks and bugs are going to happen. 
but it's tough because we're dealing with you know real users money and so as builders we we have to do the job of making sure that we're releasing product that is that is structurally sound from a security perspective as we can make it at the time but the reality of the situation is in a nascent ecosystem you know hacks are going to happen so i would say always do right by your users and i think what 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 Corey said is right in terms of if users know that you weren't trying to fleece them, they're going to give you more grace, right? Um, but from our perspective, hacks are going to happen. And so also we, we really need these early users, of which there are only 2.5 million, um, to, to give grace and to be good testers and to, and to be good team players because they are part of this ecosystem. The users are part of this ecosystem as much as we are. No one says Facebook users are part of the Facebook ecosystem, but most certainly in Web3, we say Web3 users are part of the ecosystem. They're part of the puzzle that are going to, to allow us to build sound systems. And so, you know, give grace. As far as the bounty, I could talk about this, you know, for hours because, because I, I um, feel very strongly about it. But, you know, there has to be a better bounty program set up. We have to encourage more white hat hackers. There are just too many, you know, black hat hackers in crypto today that then come back later and, you know, negotiate with the team for, you know, X amount of money. I, I mean, you know, CC Mango, uh, who, who's going through the, the struggle of this right now. Um, so building out better white hat programs in, in crypto and incentivizing uh, better bounties for finding bugs earlier in, in these platforms, there's a lot that the ecosystem can be doing uh, to be better on that front. And, and I'll be honest with you, today, as a business owner, as a project owner, um, doing security checks on blockchain are incredibly expensive. So I think projects right now are also having to uh, weigh, you know, the cost of doing a security check pre-launching their project. And so our ability as an ecosystem to also bring the cost down of doing security sweeps um, and these kinds of analyses before launch um, would, would go a long way in terms of investing in the security of the entire community. It would not surprise me if some of these bugs that have been discovered and some of these hacks that have occurred are because business owners were having to make that, that really tricky decision between do I pay for a $200,000 or $250,000 security audit or I launch this to my users who are begging to get their hands on it. And, you know, there's no right answer. But I think the ecosystem has to give grace. Users are our partners through this transition. Um, and it's going to make all the difference in the world uh, as we're onboarding, you know, more users into Web3. Uh, I love it. I uh, appreciate your transparency in the matter. I think it's, uh, these are all extremely important uh, pieces of information to keep, in, to keep in mind just for anyone, any budding developers out there, but also for the community to be aware of as well. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Security is one of the most paramount uh, variables when, when creating a, um, any sort of, of, of project on, on Web3. You know, it could either make or break a project. Um, and I think it's really helpful for people to kind of have a broader understanding of what that looks like, just especially from a developer perspective. And I think that's a huge, huge uh, point as well that cannot, again, be understated is the value of making those connections with the community just for so many senses. Like the, the, the feedback that you can get, the input that you can get, and there's just, you know, the magic in creating relationships uh, over a kind of a like-minded goal at the end of the end of the road as well. So uh, really good questions you guys br brought up. Um, yeah, appreciate uh, you taking the time there. Um, so my next question for you is a bit more specific uh, to, to gaming as well. And it's talking kind of about the psychological components of Web3 games and then just games in general. Uh, kind of talking about uh, the reward mechanisms versus kind of the fun factor when it comes to the the motivation behind playing games. Um, I want to ask you guys from your perspective, is one more important than the other? And how do these come into play when designing a game? Corey, you start out. I'll bring up the rear on this one. This is a fun question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, my, when, we, when we started out here, and, and, you know, I go all the way back to some of the white papers that we had looked at of companies in the space, you know, like our, our friends at Genopets and VR1 Gaming. And, you know, what, what, you know, really struck me in the foundational component is that in Web2, you could game for hours and you could buy these skins, you could spend thousands of dollars. And at the end of the day, you know, really all you had, if you were good at the game, was kind of, you know, street cred with your friends unless you became a programmer. 
Um, and then in that case, you got signed and you, you're making millions of dollars now. And so, you know, what really flipped um, kind of gaming on its head is that these contributors to these game ecosystems could and should be the ones that are benefiting from the, uh, I would say, the growth in the community, the economic value that comes, you know, with that. And so when we started to think about, you know, where do we want to play in this space, it's, okay, well, you know, we definitely want to start and allow for our users to come in, play a game that they, they understand. We, you know, we didn't want to go down the, the, AAA, uh, the, the AAA path. We wanted to create games that were, you know, somewhat easy to understand. Maybe they existed in, in you know, Web2 already, um, but were, were challenging and could, you know, based on skill, allow for users to win fun things. So whether it's Solana that you can kind of go, you know, go and, and convert right back into dollars, soul-based NFTs, prizes, concert, all types of things, that things that you could win really at, at an arcade today, uh, gift cards and, and the likes. And so um, really at, at our core, at our foundation, if you are playing Mushroom Party games, you are able to win, able to win in a fair way, you're improving your skills if it's if it's you know Dgen war game or one of our skill based games, um, and and at the end of the day, you are the one who is benefiting from the time you spent on our platform. Whether it's because you hold one of our NFTs and our NFT holders get soul distributions if you're active, um, benefiting from all of the work that our builders are doing, putting new games onto Mushroom Party. My, my view on the floor price of our NFT after we mint is that. You know, as, as we continue to invest in our company, floor, should, price, floor price should go up. Um, and so really thinking about how do we as a company provide amazingly fun games that users and players can come and based on the time and skill that they um, provide into our gaming ecosystem, they can be the winners, not, not Mushroom Party, the company. Yeah, I think that, there was all these telltale signs of the future of Web3. Um, and I kind of always explain it as like Web 2.5. And so there was this period of time during the pandemic where you had the, the blow up of what's called the creator economy. Um, and, and very similarly, pro gaming, I think, was the preview mm -hmm. to the movie for this as well. So in the same way that the creator economy it, uh, you know, created the concept of an individual person can cut out the middleman and drive value from their talent, whatever that is. Pro gaming was a preview to the movie for play to earn because Corey's right before all you got was the street cred of going to school and saying you were number one on Battlefront 2. And then all of a sudden you could be number one on Battlefront 2 and get paid and have sponsors. And that was the preview of the movie for play to earn, right? Because now we're cutting out the middleman again. Screw the sponsors, screw the big, screw all the, you know, the big wigs that, that are starting to claw their way into programming. Let's be someone in Indonesia or the Philippines or Missouri where I'm from. And wow, I can just log on to the internet and play to earn if I'm good at the game or if I'm having fun. That's truly like where we're headed as a space. And um, we wanted to be at the forefront of that. And, and Corey's right. Like there are great builders on Solana and on blockchain in, in, in its entirety, they're building the next level AAA beautiful games. And my hat goes off to them, but they're going to have, in my opinion, a much larger educational learning curve than we will. And why, why does that matter? It's not because I'm trying to say I want to be more successful than them. It's because we have to onboard more folks now. They're going to spend millions literally of dollars on a beautiful AAA game and the last thing this industry needs is for it to fall flat because there just is not the captive audience for them to capture. And so we are intentional about the fact that we're here in the trenches now trying to, trying to bring on new users. Um, you know, one anecdote I have, which really sums up in my mind, is we have someone in our Discord server and they were a first time DGen word game player. They have a wife who is completely not in crypto today. And he mentioned in our server, you have my wife hooked. Right. That to me was like, wow, you know, it's, it's silly. It's so, one small story, but it's one extra soldier on our side. If you, you know, <laughs> excuse the pun, because his wife probably ridicules him for being on crypto, as many of us feel um, with our significant others. 
And yet this game was what turned her on to her first Web3 experience because he handed her the phone and she played a game. I mean, that is super powerful from my perspective in terms of where we are, where we want to play and where, where we want to be um, and where play to earn uh, is headed as well. Travis, I'll give I have one other quick antidote. And I think it's like we kind of take a step back and look at some of the other industries and, you know, how, you know, I always think of how can a public public ledger system be applied to an industry to create value for the users in that ecosystem? And so, you know, my view on, um, you know, the industries that will be able to leverage blockchain the best, I think, you know, gaming is probably gaming is number one, in my opinion. Um, and I think, you know, media and, and DeFi will be, you know, close seconds. Um, and, and part of that is because the gaming, the gaming ecosystem is, is super fragmented. And so, um, you know, more traditional companies. So like, think of like the banks, like the banks would not adopt, like in our, in the United States, I always forget how, how global the audiences are. The banks in the United States, there's, you know, there's probably eight, eight or nine of them. All of the CEOs of the, the big banks know each other. They, they could get on a phone call within five minutes and say, Hey, you know, this blockchain is not good for our business. You know, we tend to settle our trades T plus three for 2% of whatever the transaction is. You know, if we let a blockchain come in and do that, it takes all the margin out of our business. We can no longer charge for that. And so I think that industries where there's a concentrated group of individuals who will run that industry and like a, a, a government would be a really good example of that. Those are industries that, that are unlikely, in my opinion, to adopt uh, blockchains um, in the near future. When you look at industries like gaming that are super fragmented, I think they don't have the ability to all hop on a call and say, hey, blockchain is bad for our industry. So there's too many of them and they don't they don't have to work as as collegially as the, the banks have to, especially after 08 and 09. And so my, my view on gaming is that over the next five years, you know, when I think we look back five years from now, no games. If, if people are still building games in Web 2, it'll it'll be it'll look like kind of blockbuster. Um, and I say that because, you know, you know, I think Epic and, and Riot Games, all of the big gaming companies, they would like for the status quo to continue in, in, in the direction it's going. You know, when you when they sell us when you buy a skin on on uh, Fortnite, you know, they get all of the margin for that. And so it's a really good business for them. Um, my my what I've heard from those companies is that they're mortified of what Web3 will do to the economics of their business. And so my view on, on gaming is that gaming companies need to kind of, you know, my hope is they wake, have woken up to this fact. And if they're not starting to build their games on chain, um, then, the, you know, the, my, my guess is they, they will be, you know, the blockbuster to some of the Web3 companies as, as Netflix. It makes a lot of sense. Very, very um, interesting concept of bringing the, co or of bringing the ideas of centralization versus decentralization to uh, the kind of the gaming community and development. Um, definitely something to, to put some, some thought into. And, um, you know, it's as for, for anyone who is thinking about uh, moving forward with developing a P2E game, definitely something worth, you know, uh, mulling over and putting a fair amount of consideration for, especially for the, uh, the forward movement of P2E in general. Um, so before kind of carrying on here, just being mindful of time, uh, we're going on an hour here that we've been speaking. Uh, so I wanted to ask you guys one more question. And then depending on the time that uh, on, on kind of your time frame here, uh, if you guys would be open to receiving some questions from anyone in the audience right now, um, how does that sound? Absolutely. Bring them on. Love it. Love it. So the kind of the question that I wanted to ask you, I think it's a pretty good segue from the topic we were just having here was... Uh, with a focus on kind of the economic uh, revenue streams and, and um, topics such as that, what factors contribute to the longevity of P2E games? And I think you guys have kind of touched on this a bit, but I'm curious to kind of put a, shed a little bit more light onto this topic and uh, see what you guys are thinking. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, earlier I was very complimentary of Stepin. Um, and, and generally, I'm complimentary to other folks in the industry. But Stefan, Stefan is also a good example of a company that, uh, in terms of the original use case, uh, they did not have a sound uh, tokenomics. And so 
that is what's going to contribute to the long longevity of play to earn is there has to be an understanding of tokenomics. By the way, there's awesome companies out there. Don't mean to plug other companies that are actually helping projects uh, build out sound economic structures. And my background is in economics. So if you want sound tokenomics, hire an economist. Uh, because, because right now <laughs> we're just printing uh, you know, these tokens that really have no no underlying value. And then we're surprised when they pump and dump. Um, and so from our perspective, we think about this very critically. One, this is one of the reasons why all of our games say are transacted in Seoul. Because Seoul has a backing of following is a legitimate cryptocurrency. And so our ability to use that to transact in games already, one, reduces the risk to a user of exchanging soul for a token, but two, they, they often have soul on their wallet already. So there's already legitimacy built in the currency. If we were ever to introduce some other token or some other form of digital asset, we would not push to connect it day one to a pool or anything like that. Instead, before we would encourage the financialization of that token, we would make sure there's some kind of underlying value to it in our gaming ecosystem. And I think that's key to the success. You can't just say step and earn money because the issue with that is if you're issuing this token, it has to have some underlying value. You can say step and earn something else that we've already negotiated and have utility for. That might drive some long-term value, but I think that's just where a lot of PD P to play to earn folks just weren't sharp enough is you have to build the utility first of that third party token the same way you do with nfts right non-fungible tokens fungible tokens they're all tokens at the end of the day if there's not some underlying use case for that token it's just uh as an engineer on my team calls it it's just a shit coin and it is <laughs> i mean uh quite frankly and so uh from our perspective if we were ever to introduce you know a a uh spl token or, or a uh, fungible token, uh, we would want to make sure there was some utility and underlying use case in our ecosystem for it first. And to be honest, I wouldn't care about the price movement if some third party set up a pool. I would mostly care about, am I still, is that token still a viable way for users to get some kind of utility, whether it be pleasure, leisure, prizes um, from that underlying token? And I think the entire industry has to focus on that first before they get too attracted to the financialization piece of this. Yeah, no, Gabriel, that was a, gr a really great overview. And I, I like, like said almost a little bit, but like thinking about sustainable utility for users. And, and I think there's a, there's a reason like Gabriel and our team, we built more, you know, we, our games are, are on chain and our utility is set up before we, we minted our NFT because we wanted our users to see that we have the chops to build the games and, and really feel and experience the utility of our NFT before it was minted. Um, so, you know, that's why we did that a little bit differently. You know, I, I think back to, you know, when I kind of got over the hump personally into crypto, you know, it had, it had to do with really two things, you know, for something to have value, you have, you have to have a marketplace to buy it and sell it. And then the second is somebody has to want to own whatever you're selling. Somebody that has that utility for someone to want to own it. And so that's why we're so focused on this, uh, the utility of uh, our NFT, our games to our users, because it's, it's so important. And I would say that, you know, besides utility, if there was one other thing that I think is probably the most important, it goes, I think, for every company, irrespective of the industry, is being long-term greedy. And what does long-term greedy mean? It means that, and it's something that we, we practice, it means that we will never trade a short-term gain at the expense of one of our users, if we take care of our users and we make sure our users love our games, they'll come back and play them again. And over a, a longer period of time, we'll create a, a growing ecosystem of those folks playing our games. If we don't take care of our users, we take advantage of them, we promise them things that we can't build, um, they're not going to stick around very long. I love it. Um, it's so refreshing to hear. Uh, uh, a team just talks so passionately about how much their community means to them. I think you guys have uh, really got that aspect dialed. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, you sharing that. And before I ask uh, anyone up here who, who may have a question, wondering if you guys wanted to share any details that you may have about your mid. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So we've been working super closely with Magic Eden over the past handful of months. Um 
And I would say everything from, you know, number one most important thing, game development, to the artwork, to making sure that um, we've got a very strong whitelist and an awesome, you know, community of folks that are going to come in and, and buy our NFTs. And so um, we will be on Magic Eden's Launchpad. So we, we have a signed contract. Our, um, our mint date is something that we're going to announce at some point this week. I'm not, it'll, I'm not sure it'll be today, more likely tomorrow, um, our, our exact mint date. But it, we will be on Magic Eden's launch pad. It, it will be in October. I can tell you that. Um, the price will be somewhere between one and two soul. We, we really want for everyone to be able to um, access and, and mint our NFT. We don't, we don't want it to be too expensive. Um, what else am I missing? Sorry, I went a little bit of a rant there, Gabriel. No, that's it. The artwork's going to be awesome. These NFTs will, by the way, be um, generative. So we're going to start with these the beautiful look of the NFTs, but it's absolutely our intention as a team to maintain the ability to upgrade our NFT down the line, which obviously is so gaming-esque, but also just really important for us in terms of driving value from every single angle we can for our NFT holders. Uh, Mint will be between one and two soul, which is, Corey's right, like, wow, what a steal in, in this crypto winter. Um, and you are going to be a partner in our journey as a gaming studio. And I think that's so exciting. You know, I mean, I, 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 not to go on a tangent, but in the same way we talked about the transition from Web 2 to Web 3 and how anyone can be anything, you being an NFT holder of Mushroom Party, if you ever wanted to be part of a game studio, you're going to have the opportunity to really be, be a piece of this community and this story. And uh, it gives me chills. That's why I got into Web3, um, because that's really the power of, of Web3. And, uh, you know, anyone listening, like, join us. Join us, uh, you know, as we write this story and uh, play some games along the way, which I think is pretty cool, too. And I'll, I'll leave, I'll, I'll give one more note, because... Um, I would say, you know, in, in play during gaming in, in Web3, there's a gray area. We have the, the best regulatory advisor in the country. Um, the firm's called Pericles. It's run by a gentleman named Bradley Tusk. Bradley's one of our, our advisors. He's a good friend of mine. Um, he owns a land-based casino and does tons of work for companies that are, are in uh, this regulated space. And so um, we have awesome regulatory partners, a great law firm that helps us out with all of our legal worth. I, I, legal work. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the folks at Latham and Watkins. Um, and we have amazing investors uh, that we're working for. They're, we've got a group of angels that, um, you know, we, we are um, working our tails off for. And so um, really, it's, it's just an incredible community all the way from the top. Our investors, our, you know, our board member, our advisors, um, our team, um, our users, who are the, the most important folks. And so, you know, really from top to bottom, we've got, you know, resources to, um, you know, really be successful in, in building out Mushroom Party. Uh, wonderful, guys. Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm feeling it. You guys definitely, um, you paint a beautiful picture of what you guys have going on over there. And I wish you guys all the success success in the world. Uh, clearly your, your values are aligned and um, yeah, very much looking forward to kind of seeing where you guys land with all this and uh, I expect nothing but good things for you. Um, so before we, before we end off, if anyone has any other questions that they'd like to ask, feel free to raise your hand. I'll get you up here and uh, yeah, we'll give you guys some time to, to ask anything, any, any last burning questions that you may have. And uh, Marco as well, if you had anything that you wanted to ask here, by all means, my friend, Come on up and uh, let's hear what you've got to say. Man, I was just sitting back and enjoying you guys talking. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, it must took a lot of effort to build something like this, to have uh, amazing games and everything else that is aligned with it. And can you say a little bit about the journey? How do you guys uh, get started? How did it uh, look like in the beginning? Can you share a little bit your details about uh, growing that successful play to earn games on Solana? <laughs> I, honestly, this is a tough question to answer because I feel like I blinked and we had five games. I mean, Corey gave way more detailed timeline than I usually give. I, I could not even tell you. We're moving so fast right now. I could not even tell you uh, the journey. All I know is that we wake up every day, we drink a lot of coffee, we build great tech, 
we talk to our users, we rinse and repeat. And I know that's a really crappy answer to your question because it's not nearly as beautiful and as and eloquent as some of the other things we discussed on this call. But uh, we're builders at heart. Um, and uh, I blinked and we had five games and I'll probably blink again. We'll have 10 and I'll blink again and we'll have some other fun stuff up our sleeve. Man, a lot of projects are struggling with what they want to, to get it done. But you guys are doing like five things in a row and everything looks slick. Everything is just, uh, you know, when you go to the website, you check the games, you check everything. It works perfectly. It looks great. Uh, you have this community. And I don't know, uh, from the viewer's perspective, it looks like it, 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 it took so long to build everything. But... Talking with you guys, it seems like you've done it in, in a blink of an eye. I don't know. <laughs> Do well, all you I can say, listen, all I can this? say is we have really great team members. I mean, I have worked with other engineers in my career, worked with other product partners in my career. I'm right now working with some of the best folks, for sure, on the engineering side and across the entire team that I've worked with in my career. And we're a small but mighty team, right? I think there will be a time and a place for us to scale and grow. But I also think there's something to be said for being really lean and having just really good part project partners who are really just there and effective and smart and capable. And, you know, like one of our engineers is on the call who by far is the best engineer I've worked with in my career so far. Um, and that makes a difference in being able to blink your eye for sure. Um, and if you need one more reason to mint our NFTs, that's another good reason is because uh, competence is key. Um, and Web3 is starting to attract some of the best talent in the industry. And uh, it's going to be really exciting where things head. Yeah, and I like the trend where Web2 employees or companies switching slowly but confidently into the Web3 world especially seeing people from Meta, from Google, from other larger companies moving on uh, to the next big thing and building their own dreams. That, uh, that is amazing. I mean, if you look back uh, like five years ago, 10 years ago, you couldn't imagine that this will be the way uh, of the present. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, I love this space because it's constantly evolving. There is a lot of projects with different ideas, different use cases for different products you know and uh just i know i don't know it, it give us all hope and the whole web three moment is uh is a quiet refreshment living in the uh you you know the old ways <laughs> of web two what, what, what a great way to kind of paper off this this chat just so bullish on web three bullish on what you guys are up to uh, I'm feeling motivated and ready to get to work myself here. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't see anyone raising their hands here to ask any questions. Uh, Corey, Gabe, I want to leave the last few minutes here to you guys. The floor is yours. If there's anything, any last uh, points you want to share with us, now is your chance, and uh, we'll we'll wrap her up. I'm not, I'm going to let Corey end. I'm just going to say thanks guys for everything. Uh, we really appreciated this time. We, I love, uh, you know, as, as one of the engineers on the team, uh, I love g getting out of my engineering hole once in a while to talk, to talk shop. Um, and always appreciate, you know, the opportunity. Um, so thanks Cree our, our, uh, marketing guru. And thank you guys as well for hosting us. And, uh, we're really excited, uh, you know, to gain you guys as, as partners and as users um, and uh, a lot more coming soon. Amazing. Yeah, I'll leave you guys off. Play our games. If you, if you want a spot on our whitelist, hop into our Discord, reach out to anybody on the team. You know, we'll take care of you. The whitelist is, is filling up, which we're super excited about. Um, and be on the lookout. It'll be the, the last week of October. We'll, we'll be minting our NFT. So have, have an eye on Magic Eden Launchpad and, you know, enjoy our games. Love it, guys. <clears throat> yeah, and for anyone anyone who's interested in doing that, and I highly encourage you to check them out, feel free to just go back to, once again, to Mushroom Party's Twitter page. They have a link tree there with all of the pertinent links that uh, you can use to check out their different games, check out their Discord. Uh, definitely worth getting involved. And, um, yeah, seeing, seeing how their journey and being part of their journey and seeing how it unfolds here. Uh, and then lastly, guys, um, just kind of in terms of collaboration here, one of the things I, I've been I've liked to uh, kind of just 
leave leave uh, different projects and different teams with is um, very. I would very much be happy to kind of, in spirit of collaboration, just to keep in touch with you guys, maybe touch base every couple of weeks, get some updates, see where you're going, see if we can be of any assistance to each other. So feel free to reach out anytime. And uh, I'd love to uh, love to keep the stoke, love to keep the party going. And um, and we can't wait to see which skeleton you get, Travis. We cannot wait to see your PFP as a cool, awesome mushroom party skeleton. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All I gotta say is I hope he has a jetpack. That'd be that would be <laughs> make my day. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, hey, huge pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time here today. And um, yeah, look forward to. Uh, all right. Also, sorry before I before I close off here. Thank you to everyone who stayed this entire time and, and uh, hung out with us. Hope you guys learned lots and uh, look forward to our next chat next week. Much love, everyone. Thank you, guys, and uh, have awesome time building new stuff. <laughs>